Welcome to Radflix 1990. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe Pinionated. Pinionated. What is a rad flick? A rad flick is a movie that has stood the test of time. Forget what those asshats, the critics, the award show said back in 1990. Doesn't matter anymore. A lot of those movies didn't stand the test of time. These movies are all certified rad by our panel of normal Canadians. We're going to get right into it. Rad flicks. 1990 start off with horror Brad is horror suspense movie of 1990 we have seven finalists the seven finalists are tremors starring fred ward and kevin bacon director ron underwood in a small desert town of perfection nevada strange underground creatures start attacking the town folk and it's up to a handyman and his friend to save the day elephant guns rad flick tremors next finalist is tales from the dark side starring debbie harry and christian slater director john harrison basically an anthology of horror stories told by a young boy to a witch who plans to cook him for dinner. Each story delves into the macabre and sinister. Next, horror suspense goes to Misery, written by Stephen King, directed by Rob Reiner, starring Kathy Bates and James Caan, psycho fan of an author. The fan wants the author to continue writing a book series, and she holds them captive. Up next is Jacob's Ladder, starring Elizabeth Pina and Tim Robbins. Director Adrian Lin. It's about this Vietnam War vet struggling with hallucinations, nightmares that kind of blur the lines between reality and delusion. Next finalist is Flatliners, starring Julia Roberts and Kiefer Sutherland. Julia Roberts is really great in this movie, and she's in a series of suspense movies over the coming five or so years directed by joel schumacher it's about a group of medical students that are conducting experiments including near-death experiences to explore the afterlife next up is nightbreed starring craig sheffer and david cronenberg directed by clive barker a troubled young man discovers a hidden underground city populated by these monsters known as nightbreed and the last finalist is it this might have been a tv movie i'm not 100 certain written but again by steve King, directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, starring Jonathan Brandis and Tim Curry, kids that were haunted when they were younger, and they all come back to their hometown later on in life. Clown named Pennywise. And the raddest horror suspense of 1990 goes to Misery, once again directed by Rob Reiner, starring James Caan and Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates got a lot of buzz, well deserved buzz for this one. Certified rad flick. It's not the greatest year for horror suspense movies in general, but this is a classic suspense movie. Runner up was Flatliners, and third place went to Tremors. Right. First category, Radis Horror, 1991. Let's go. Finalist, Radis Horror Suspense, 1991. Goes to Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Freddy Krueger, Robert Englund. This is basically the end of the Freddy Krueger franchise. And this is actually the one when I started watching it. I was still just a kid. Next up, directed by Jonathan Demi. The movie is Silence of the Lambs. Starring Scott Glenn, Ted Levine, Anthony Hopkins, Jodie Foster. Silence of the Lambs. One of the best suspense movies ever made. You know that one house that adults whisper about and children cross the street to avoid? Wes Craven brings you the people under the stairs. Brandon Adams, Everett McGill, and Wendy Robbie. Sorry, directed by Wes Craven. I love this movie. So thank you, Wes Craven. Again, yes. This is like the number one movie I worried that I would miss when I made these lists. Nothing cooler. Fool. The, the daughter's name is Alice. My favorite thing that Wes Craven even did since Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 was Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Next up, starring Jessica Lang, Juliette Lewis, Nick Nolte, and Robert De Niro in Martin Scorsese's Cape Fear. A psychological thriller, this psychopath gets out of jail and seeks revenge on his lawyer. Winner for Suspense Horror 1991 goes to The Silence of the Lambs. Runner-up goes to Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Can't argue with either. It's an amazing suspense movie, and People Under the Stairs is just a really underrated movie. And it's Radis Horror Suspense of 1992. The finalists are, and there's how many finalists? Seven finalists. First finalist, directed by Master of Suspense, David Lynch. The movie is Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. If you've seen Twin Peaks, the TV series, this serves as like a prequel to Twin Peaks. And it delves into the last days of Laura Palmer's life. Next finalist, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Directed by Curtis Hansen. Starring Annabelle Scoria, Skyora. 
Sciorra and Rebecca de Mornier. After the death of her husband, a pregnant widow seeks revenge on his family. Yikes. This is a movie I haven't seen in a really long time, but it's certified rad. I cannot wait to watch this movie again. The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Next finalist from 1992 for horror suspense goes to Candyman. Directed by Bernard Rose, starring Virginia Madsen and Tony Todd. When I was a kid, no movie messed me up more than Candyman. I remember telling my parents that uh, I had a nightmare and I had to sleep on their at the foot of their bed. First time I saw it was at my buddy's house. Uh, we watched the whole movie. I had to pee at the start of the movie. I remember that. Couldn't go to the bathroom after about 10 minutes into the show. I was afraid of the bathroom. At the end of the movie, he sent me home. Nobody was home. I was afraid to go in the house by myself. So I remember playing basketball outside my house. I remember watching it again with uh, all my close buddies from uh, the Valley. Petrified. To this day, if the lights go out when I go into the bathroom, that is like the worst thing that could possibly happen to me. Torture me, get things out of me, just put me in a dark bathroom. Candyman, do not say his name five times in the mirror and then turn the lights off. He will appear behind you. Next finalist for Radis Horror Suspense 1992 goes to Death Becomes Her, directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Bruce Willis, Meryl Streep, special effects, Robert Zemeckis. Last finalist for Horror Suspense 1992 goes to a comedy directed by Sam Raimi, starring Bruce Campbell, as Ash Williams in Evil Dead Part 3, also known as Army of Darkness. This movie is hilarious. Straight up, my boomstick. Love Army of Darkness. And the final finalist of 1992 for Horror Suspense goes to Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola. Starring Gary Oldman and Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves, based on Bram Stoker's novel Dracula. One of the greatest directors of all time, Bram Stoker's Dracula. The winner of Radis Horror Suspense of 1992 goes to Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Give it up. Give it up for Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman, certified rad all the time too. Love Gary Oldman. First category for 1993, we're going with Radis Horror. So there's seven finalists. First finalist based on a novel by Stephen King. That's about the 30th time we've said on a rad flick so far. Our first finalist for Radis Horror Suspense in 1993 is The Dark Half. Timothy Hutton, Amy Madigan, directed by George A. Romero. The Dark Half. Next up, starring Warwick Davis from Willow and Jennifer Aniston. The movie is The Leprechaun. That's right, Jennifer Aniston. The Leprechaun, directed by Mark Jones. I am the the leprechaun i am the leprechaun runs your wings roll next up directed by guillermo del toro chronos starring federico lupe and ron perlman this is a mexican horror movie creepy terrifying really next up starring carrie uis and alicia silverstone the movie is the crush directed by alan shapiro i remember renting this with some buddies and thinking it was a bit of a thriller alicia silverstone we used to be absolutely in love with her the crush next up directed by philip noy with Billy Baldwin and Sharon Stone. The movie is Sliver. Edge of your seat thriller. Sharon Stone's back. Sliver. Directed by Fraser C. Heston. Written by Stephen King. This time in Castle Rock, Maine. The movie is Needful Things. Starring Max Von Sido and Ed Harris. This guy moves to town. He's the devil. He has a shop, a pawn shop, or whatever you want the most will be available there. Needful Things. Unbelievable how many stories this guy had. Stephen King. Awesome, man. Last but certainly not least. Directed by Robert Lieberman Fire in the Sky. Starring Robert Patrick, D.B. Sweeney based on a true story. This man abducted by aliens. Horrifying. We talked about uh, Unsolved Mysteries in the last list. Fire in the Sky, the movie is kind of on a level with Unsolved Mysteries. This one scared the crap out of a lot of kids. The only thing that's not scary about this movie is if you watch an interview with the real guy that claims this happened to it, it just doesn't really sound that credible to me. Anyways, that's just me. An erratus horror suspense of 19. 19- 93 goes to fire in the sky this one screwed up a lot of kids shout out to amy fire in the sky Hoo-wee. first category is raddest horror of 1994 the first movie up is wes craven's new nightmare directed by wes craven this guy is a legend freddy coming out of the movies and into reality next finalist for raddest horror suspense 94 it goes to frankenstein directed by kenneth brana mary shelley's frankenstein starring robert de niro and kenneth brana i don't think i ever saw this one up next another one from john carpenter in the mouth of madness this one stars sam neill and julie carmen i don't remember this one either so there you go 
two in the same category. I don't think I've seen them. The final finalist for 1994 Horror Suspense goes to Wolf, directed by Mike Nichols, starring Michelle Pfeiffer and Jack Nicholson. So Catwoman and the Joker. It's funny because I own this movie and it was actually one of the first movies that I ever bought used from the video store. And that's how I ended up basically buying movies going forward is I'd buy used ones from the rental store. I was never too crazy about it, to be honest with you. Kind of a bad buy, but I think it was just cheap. 94 is when I started thinking that I knew something about movies. This is where my VHS collection really got going was 1994. Raddest horror suspense for 1994 goes to Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So similar to Wes to put his name in the title. Runner up is In the Mouth of Madness from John Carpenter. First category for Rad Flicks, 1995 is horror and suspense. Six final for horror and suspense. The first finalist is Copycat, starring Sigourney Weaver, Holly Hunter, directed by John Amiel. Next finalist for raddest horror suspense, 1995, is the movie Seven, starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey, directed by David Fincher. I've never been crazy about this movie. As good as it is, my friends were growing up, even my son loves it. What do you think of Seven? You know, it was really interesting because of the Seven Deadly Sin. Envy, Sloth. Is it Rat? If anyone knows them, put them in the comments. Yeah, put them in the comments. Uh, yeah, I wasn't paying attention that day at church. Next finalist for Raddus Horror Suspense is Demon Knight, directed by Ernest Dickerson and starring Billy Zane and and William Sadler. It's more like a horror comedy, this one. Fun Avenue. The mysterious drifter Billy Zane battles demons who are after a powerful relic while holed up in a remote boarding house with a group of strangers. Billy Zane looks like he wears eyeliner. Next finalist for raddest horror suspense goes to Species. It stars Natasha Henstridge, Michael Madsen, directed by Roger Donaldson. This was like the big movie for Natasha. She's Canadian. Next up, falls a bit under the suspense category. This is directed by one of my favorite director is Terry Gilliam, a former member of Monty Python squad, starring Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. The movie is 12 Monkeys. I went and saw it at the Caprice Theater in Nanaimo. Terry Gilliam is just amazing. I love all of his movies. This one ranks right near the top for me. Dystopian future, convict Bruce Willis sent back in time to gather information about a man-made virus that wiped out most of humanity. It's one of those movies too where you can watch it 20 times and kind of see something different every time. The final finalist for a raddest horse Suspense 1995 from our Radflix panel of normal people goes to the movie directed by Larry Clark. The movie is Kids, uh, starring Leo Fitzpatrick and Justin Pierce. It's not a horror. It's not really a suspense. It's just scary. I saw this movie when I was a teenager, scared the living bejesus out of me. It's awful. It's the most intense movie. Look at these teens, their life, some AIDS going on, and some drug use, and uh, some horrible things happen in this show. And it's very, very, very real. Educated us well because we were terrified of it. And that movie really hit home, seeing people's lives get ruined. So the raddest horror suspense movie of 1995 as voted on by our panel of normal Canadians was the movie Seven, directed by David Fincher, starring Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, and Morgan Freeman. Well-deserved. I'm pretty sure it was pretty much across the board. Yeah, almost across the board. Everyone should watch it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's not a family movie night movie. We're going to get into rad flicks now. The first category rad flicks 1996 we're certifying these movies rad the first category is horror and in horror this year we have five finalists the first finalist directed by the man Wes Craven stars Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox the movie is Scream Drew Barrymore was in Scream she was in the first scene of Scream you know, and everybody, grow, if you grew up in my generation, just loved Drew Barrymore. We grew up with her playing Gertie in E.T. Yeah, it was a big deal. Wes Craven makes cool movies. It kind of felt like a bit of a horror revival when it came out because it felt like there wasn't a lot of great horror movies for a few years. And then Scream came out, something original. This is kind of like if all of a sudden Marvel created a new superhero. It was kind of like that, yeah. where it's just like, we're getting so tired of Jason and Freddy killing everybody. Okay, cool. A new idea. This mask, a different mask, a different whatever. Like, thank God somebody did something different. And Wes Craven's so great at that. I love the people under the stairs. We were talking about that a couple episodes ago. Horror movies are traditional. Like, they're like it's dark. You can't see. You know, you're not sure. But with Scream, it was like vivid easy to watch next up directed by tom holland and starring robert burke and john man 
Montagna, Mantigna, Montana, based off a Stephen King classic. Stephen King's come up more than anybody. The movie is thinner. I love this movie, actually. And what a great book and what a great idea. I just love the gypsy. I was a real big Stephen King fan when I was younger and read all of his books. It's a super cool story. Be careful what you wish for. You'll have to start a book, a book one, Joe, and do Stephen King books. Yeah, that's not going to fucking happen, though. And then vote in the com- put in the comments if you want Joe to do a book review. <laughs> That'll be really quick. It'll be like Robert Munch. Next up from Robert Rodriguez uh, teamed up with Quentin Tarantino and George Clo- sorry, George Clooney, Selma Hayek, Harvey Keitel, and Quentin Tarantino. The movie is Dusk Till Dawn from Dusk Till Dawn. Okay, it's a cool show. It's a cool show. And then there's just a major twist halfway through the show. I dig it. Grindhouse style of movie. Julia Lewis is in this movie. Cheech Marin. Like, Excellent movie. Danny Trejo is incredible in From Dust Till Dawn. I don't know if I'd call it a horror. It's absolutely a suspense. Next up, directed by Peter Jackson, starring Trina Alverdo and Michael J. Fox. The movie is The Frighteners critically acclaimed and uh, Peter Jackson does an amazing job with the special effects. I remember the special effects being kind of like frighteningly good. Wasn't expecting that at all. It kind of almost seems like a, like a goofy kids movie at times. Mm -hmm. And it's just the special effects are kind of creepy good. The final finalist for Radis Horror Suspense, this is a suspense, comes from director James Foley, starring Reese Witherspoon and Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg in Fear. When you're young and you're dating in a psycho, which most people, you know, are you dated when you were young you probably dated someone that was a little bit wild and marky mark he is scary i think Alyssa milano's in this movie yeah. sleeping with the enemy was a good movie this this is different i think because it's more of a coming of age type of movie like so there's a mix of a lot of different themes well, also, in this movie i actually like this movie better than sleeping with the enemy and even though i know sleeping with the enemy is a classic and you know the soup cans and everything and this movie is definitely not as well known like most people haven't seen this movie it's more of a an out, outlier but it's a good movie and if you haven't watched it watch it and the winner of radis horror suspense of 1996 goes to wes craven's scream runner up goes to from dust till dawn and the third place goes to thinner all right rad flicks 1997 first category radis horror suspense movie starting off with a banger Event Horizon, directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, starring Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill. This movie freaked me out. I remember watching this movie alone the first time I watched it and just my eyes bugging out of my head. You know, me and my neighbor watched it as well, uh, close proximity. It's a great thriller, sci-fi. It's not like super scary, but it's definitely edge of your seat. Some parts are pretty freaky. Next up, Wes Craven's back for the sequel, Scream 2. Starring Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox and the rest of the gang. It's a whodunit murder. It's a thriller. Unbelievable that Wes Craven can follow up his previous successes almost as much as Stephen King. A lot of people like this one more than the original Scream 2. Up next, brought to you by David Fincher, The Game. Starring Sean Penn and michael douglas this movie just owns his brother conrad shows up has a gift for him and it's call this number participate in this game and it's gonna make your life better or fun one of those movies you don't know when the game's gonna start and when it's gonna end and what the game is the game a thriller like this is definition of a thriller next finalist brad is thriller horror goes to i know what she did last summer directed by jim gillespie starring sarah michelle geller and jennifer love hewitt the hot summer horror movie i know what she did last summer next finalist 1997 horror suspense goes to cube uh starring nicole de boer maurice dean wint it's a movie where these people wake up in a nightmare and these uh like a labyrinth or like a series of cubes each cubes filled with deadly traps and puzzles and then they start turning on each other cube 1997 next up from guillermo del toro jeremy northam and my girl mira sorvino the movie is mimic it's pretty cool it's about like killer cockroaches that are going to take over new york city and then mad scientist guy decides he's gonna create insect to wipe them out or this thing to wipe them out mimic and the winner goes to event horizon for raddest horror suspense of 1997 that's so cool number two on the list goes to west craven sequel scream 2 first category is raddest horror suspense uh, we have six finalists directed by ronnie Yu, starring 
Brad Dourif and Jennifer Tilly. The movie is Bride of Chucky. You remember I can't believe one? anyone voted for this. Yes, I do remember this one. I didn't really like these movies. It had John Ritter in it too. He gets killed by all the nails. Jennifer Tilly was good in this movie. Fourth Chucky movie there was. And That's the fourth one? Child's Play 1, 2, and 3, and then... All right. I didn't even think of yeah. that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 1998, we're up to Child Play 4. Next finalist, directed by legendary director John Carpenter with James Woods and Daniel Baldwin. So there's another Baldwin brother movie, Vampires. It's about a guy, Jack Crow, who, who works for the Catholic, the Catholic Church to eliminate the, the undead. Those Catholics saving the day, just like always. What would we do without them? Thanks a lot. Next up, uh, directed by somebody that's all over Radflix as well, Sam Raimi, and uh, starring Bill Paxson and Billy Bob Thornton. The movie is A Simple Plan. These guys, when they come across this plane in the woods, I think they're out hunting and it's got cash in it and like a Breaking Bad scenario where these people, you know, it's like, how low can you go for money? Billy Bob Thornton's role in this movie, it, you know, I just loved it. And Sam Raimi directed Evil Deads and all that stuff. Bridget Fonda. Yeah, okay. Bridget Fonda's a great actress. Another Nepo baby. If we're, if, should we count Nepo babies through this and sure. see where we get to? Next up, directed by Stephen Norrington, starring Wesley Snipes, Stephen Dorff. The movie is Blade. I could have put this on family movie night. One of my older sons showed this to my five-year-old son when they were babysitting. He had nightmares forever. It's a Marvel movie. Wesley Snipes is this vampire slayer. It's kind of dated now. The CGI isn't living up to snuff, but back then it was pretty cool. They actually made three of these movies. I'll be honest with you. It's uh, one of like a close relative's favorite movies and always talking about it. I've never actually watched Blade one, two, or three. This is why we have the panel is so that things make it through that I haven't seen. And it's not just my stupid opinion that matters. Next up, directed by Robert Rodriguez, starring Elijah Wood. The movie is The Faculty. Uh, The Faculty is a science fiction horror film set in high school where a group of students discovers that their teachers are being controlled by parasitic aliens. No, this is obviously based on reality. Next up from Japan, the movie The Ring, but it's the Japanese version. So this is the original one. Winner of Radis Horror Suspense for 1998 goes to A Simple Plan. She said it. That's A Simple Plan. And this is an incredible movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Second place goes to Vampires from John Carpenter. All these movies are certified rad. These are just the raddest of the year. So second raddest horror suspense of the year goes to Vampires from John Carpenter. First category for Rad Flicks, 1999, raddest horror suspense. We have seven finalists in this category. First one directed by Rodman Flender, starring Devon Sawa and Seth Green. The movie is Idle Hands. Jess, you remember that one? Yeah, I do. I, I, but not with Devon Sawa. I remember the movie with Devon Sawa. A guy's hand goes, uh, goes AWOL and starts killing people. That's what happened in that one. Next up, Heather Donahue, Michael C. Williams, a star in Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez's The Blair Witch Project. The first time that I saw it, somebody told me it was a documentary. And I believed that until I was walking out of the theater And I was saying, like, I cannot believe that shit was real. And some guy was laughing his ass off at me. He's like, dude, that was not real. (laughs) Just And then just kept walking to his car out the front of the Rutherford Theater. From the moment that the movie ended to when I was in the lobby there, I've never been so frightened in my life. Absolutely scared the crap out of me. And so I definitely I watched it quite a few times on uh, VHS. Next up, I have another very memorable moment in the theater with this next one, um, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Haley Joel Osment, Oscar nominated Haley Joel Osment and Bruce Willis. The movie is The Sixth Sense. Yeah, is it safe to spoil it 25 years later? Is it okay to talk about the ending? Because this is when you think about like twist endings, this is kind of like you know, the most iconic one. I mean, there's other ones, right? Usual suspects, but this, this was kind of the one where 
it kind of changed movies really because after that everybody wanted to have the big twist and so that big twist i remember that reveal and i can't remember if i watched this in 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 theaters or not but i i watched it you know when it came out at least if it was on uh, on video and that twist was was wild like you, you felt dumb after you're like how could i have not known this whole time I had a totally opposite experience and it was actually with the same people that I watched the Blair Witch Project with. I do remember that, but I remember turning, I turned to them in the first 10 minutes of the movie and said the ending out loud as a joke. I was kind of like kidding about it. Like I bet you that guy. I said it loud enough that the people just passed them and a few people in front of us all heard it. And at the end of the movie, I got mean mugged bad. Whereas I was like, Oh, and then turn around or whatever. And it was like unbelievable. I, I've never done that before in a movie, like nothing. Shawshank, Usual Suspects, all those movies, like no clue. As the movie went on, it just became more and more apparent that I was right. I had a really uncomfortable feeling through this whole movie. So anyways, I never watched it again. Donnie Wahlberg, right? It's like an emaciated Donnie Wahlberg that kills him, right? And you and something happens and you just kind of assume he gets better because of how they they edit it. And he was crazy good. Like he was really fucking good in that role. That that's a creepy, scary, frightening role that he pulled off. I mean, you know, he was living in the shadow of Mark for so long. He still is. But uh incredible performance coming in that movie. He was a real new kid on the block. It takes a village and uh, you know, he's he's looked at a few signs. So Next up, directed by Tim Burton and starring Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci. The movie is Sleepy Hollow. You know, Burton and Depp kind of have that Scorsese, De Niro type, you know, director, actor relationship. And he's a f- amazing actor, like one of the best actors. And so every everything he did in that time in the 90s was great. Everything he did from the 90s into the early 2000s is great. Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow was no exception. It's a really good movie, I think. I think it kind of gets hidden by some of the other great collaborations like Edward Scissorhands and Ed Wood. Next, directed by Takashi Miike. The movie is Audition from 1999. I can't pronounce pretty much any of the names there. It's pretty gruesome. It's pretty intense at the end. Like she goes on a wild killing spree at the end and like it's pretty detailed in depth. I remember like having to turn it off and it's Japanese. Yeah. Japanese, okay. Up next from 1999, directed by Jan DeBont. Starring Liam Neeson and Catherine Zeta-Jones. The movie is The Haunting. Final finalist for Radis Horror, Stir of Echoes. Uh, directed by David Comp. Starring Catherine Urbe and Kevin Bacon. Really funny is like, I, I've never seen this movie. And just as soon as you said Stir of Echoes, Kevin Bacon came into my mind. But that's it. That's it. So we used to play that all the time in that theater. We used to play Six of Kevin Bacon all the time. That's the only time I ever played it was hanging out with you guys. Hey, guess what? The winner... This is the Blair Witch Project. Raddest horror suspense of 1999. Freaky, original, love the Blair Witch Project. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Second place goes to M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense gets second place. First goes to Blair Witch Project. And apologies 25 years later to uh, all the people in the theater uh, that Joe ruined uh, the movie too. Fucking asshole. The Sixth Sense. And if you were there with me, if you remember this, uh, vouch for me in the comments. That's a wrap on Radflix 1999 and the 90s are over. I'm going to do a couple like roundup 80s and 90s episodes. I'm going to jump into the 2000s. I want to say thank you to the Normal People panel, especially Jesse for uh, being here today. Thanks for having me. I love I love talking movies. We don't get to do this. Let's talk movies more. Except for 2000. Terrible year in movies. A reminder to like, comment, subscribe, all that shit uh, below. Uh, uh, share it. Let us know what your picks would be in each category. I'm sorry. I'm a little low on facts and high on opinions. 